أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكمل العدة ولتكبر الله على ما هداكم ولا علكم تشكرون Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters and dear viewers, Ramadan Mubarak. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us about the month of Ramadan when it enters. And he says alayhi salatu wa salam, إِذَا دَخَلَ Ramadan, If Ramadan enters, the doors of paradise are flung open. The doors of Jahannam, they are bolted shut. And the shayateen and the devils, they are shackled and they are locked away. We have entered into this time, walillahi alhamd. And here at Iman channel, we have designed this program, Your Gems for Ramadan, in order to help you, bi-idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, have the best Ramadan ever. We are going to be mentioning, bi-idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala, a number of mindsets and noble actions that will ensure and allow us to attain that great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for the believers in this month. So the first thing inshallah ta'ala that we are going to speak about in this episode, it is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The love of Allah azza wa jal, it is the greatest action of the heart that allows the believer to gain a lot of status in the sight of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. But not only this, it allows the believer to sprint towards khair because in his heart there is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it is imparted on the soul, then the soul craves to do good actions. How do we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we build our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are many ways to do so, but from the greatest of ways is for us to ponder over the various blessings and virtues that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We didn't ask to be created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We didn't have a right to be created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and he just decided to create us subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy. When he created us subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could have made us anything he wanted. He could have made us an item or an object or a grain of sand or a droplet of water. He made us all human beings. He created us and he made us human beings subhanahu wa ta'ala and he perfected our creation. He gave us everything in pairs. He gave us two eyes and two ears, two hands and two feet. He gave us our parents and they are a pair, a father and a mother, a husband and a wife. He gave us the day and the night and he subhanahu wa ta'ala did all of this in order for us to have the best lives in servitude and in order for us to live the paradise in this world and in order for us to enter into the ultimate paradise of the next world. So he created us subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he didn't create us, we would not know about him. We will not have the opportunity to enter into paradise or to enter into this noble time Ramadan or to come with great acts of worship that allows this heart to find tranquility and peace. We would not know about any of this. And so he didn't just make us a human being, he made us Muslimin. He granted us Islam, he granted us Iman. And this is the greatest favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give a believer. And this is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every single day in every single prayer, in every single unit and rak'ah of the prayer, we ask him to preserve this blessing for us. And we ask him to increase us in our guidance and for us to remain firm upon the straight path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made us Muslimin. And then we see the various blessings entering into our lives. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he grants us straight away what we want. He says in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبَ لَكُمْ وَقَالَ And your Lord, Rabbukum, he said, Ud'uni, call upon me, astajib lakum, I will respond to you. And he says in Surah Al-Baqarah, in the midst of the verses of fasting, to show that this has a correlation with Ramadan. And with fasting, he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If any of my servants, if any of my worshippers, they ask you about me, O Muhammad, فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am near to them. I am near to them. 
This gives hope to the believer. This increases the believer in his love for Allah. If you are near to Allah, then Allah was always near to you. And if you have become distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah jalla wa ala is near to you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ujibu da'a da'an. I respond to the call of the caller when he calls upon me. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that, let them respond to me and let them believe in me and perhaps they'll be guided because of this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he grants you whatever you ask for. How many dreams, how many ambitions, how many goals, how many things did you have in your heart that you just raise your hands for and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you used to knock the doors of creation and they wouldn't give you what you want. But you knock the door of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he doesn't just give you what you want. He sometimes gives you subhanahu wa ta'ala more than what you want, more than what you expect. We are going to speak more about this inshallah ta'ala in the episodes ahead. But from the aspects of dua also that increase the believer or increases the believer in his love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he doesn't just give you what you ask. He also gives you what you don't ask subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآتَاكُمْ مِن كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ And Allah gave you everything you asked for. Does that mean it is restricted to that? No, it means that he knows more than what we know subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he loves us more than we, will, we love ourselves. And he has this quality of love himself subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he loves us and he has this quality of love towards the believers. He describes himself in the Quran and he says, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the of forgiving and he is the most loving subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has no parent, he has no child subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't beget, he's not begotten subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who does he love then? He loves the believers. He loves the believers subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves his worshippers. He loves those who have acknowledged his oneness. So because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves you and he loves me and he loves all of the believers, he gives us his various opportunities to worship him. These seasons to worship him. He gives us Ramadan. He gives us times and places that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we can take our worship to new heights and we can experience this special time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we cannot experience throughout the year and throughout other times. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ And your Lord, O Muhammad, he creates what he wants. And he chooses what he wants. And from the things that he chooses, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his seasons in the year for the believer to have no distractions. Ramadan, there are no distractions. Everybody's fasting, you are not fasting alone. Everybody's praying taraweeh, you are not doing this alone. Everybody's reading Quran and is engaged in consistent worship throughout the day and throughout the night. Everybody's working hard. So this now makes it easy for you. Allah Jalla wa Ala, He made you come into an environment that supports you now in your journey to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Ibn Al-Qayyim al jawziya the great scholar of the past, he speaks about the love of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he gives the example and the parable and the likeness of the bird. He said the beak of the bird, in order for the beak or the bird to see where it is flying, it requires for it to have eyes and a beak and from its front to see where it is heading. This now is the believer and his love for Allah. This is a similitude. This is the example that he is giving. And if you have this love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like we said, nothing can take it away from you. Some of the scholars, they say, there are things that can weaken it though. What can weaken your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We've spoken about what builds it up. We said pondering over the favors of Allah. What can bring it down? What can destroy it? What can ruin it? It is sins for a person to engage in sins. Now in this month, the month of Ramadan, the shayateen and the devils, they are shackled. So we are not going to be getting a lot of influence from that area. However, some of the scholars, they mention that the believer, you still find some of them engaged in sins, although the shaytan or the devil is chained and locked up. Why is this the case? This is the case because the person has become accustomed to sin. And if you have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not become accustomed to sin because if you were to fall into sin, you will come out of it straight away. You will realize and you will awaken your soul and a person will feel terrible about what they did. And this is from the conditions of tawbah and repentance that because you love Allah so much subhanahu wa ta'ala, you feel a great and a deep type of regret and remorse in your heart. So sins are a barrier for a person to develop the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is one sin that can really damage the believer's love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the sin of hypocrisy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from it. In general, the scholars, they say, ensure that you have no bad actions, you have no bad thoughts, and you have 
no bad speech during the time that you are building your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you do not ruin and destroy the good habits that you are coming with. So these are from the things that damage the love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, what allows us to fall in love with the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala is for us to recite His words, His speech subhanahu wa ta'ala. He sent it down as a guidance for all of mankind. And if we have this speech in our lives, it will act as a light for all of us bi idhnillahi ta'ala because we will find that love of Allah in the Quran. Why? A person who loves somebody, he sends them a message. However long the message is, it indicates how much love they have for this person. Imagine, dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent us all a book, a message. And in this message, there are 600 pages. 600 pages, He is telling you subhanahu wa ta'ala what He has done for you, how He has created you, how He has blessed you, how He has favored you, what He's going to do for you in the next life, the paradise He has prepared for the believers. All of this is Allah Jalla wa ala expressing His love for the believer. So when you read this now and you comprehend this, and you think about this and you reflect over this, now you likewise, you will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will have a great desire to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as possible and you will look forward to the hereafter. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, anybody who loves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah loves to meet him as well. You built your love for Allah in this world, right? And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves to meet you because you love to meet him. Anybody who dislikes or hates to meet Allah, Allah likewise dislikes to meet this person. This is from the greatest actions of the heart that we are going to work on in this month of Ramadan, inshaAllah tabarak wa ta'ala, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the key to all of goodness, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses and raises the rank of the believer, like we mentioned at the start, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before this month comes to an end, that all of us, we are enriched with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this to lead to then noble actions, and righteous actions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it the reason why all of our actions are accepted in this month. They become valid in this month and they are actions that are pleased with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from the future episodes that we have for you bi-idhnillahi ta'ala in this new show, Your Gems for Ramadan. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون